Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Nicole Gaffney, and we're here today with Chef Lee Chismar of Bolite. Hello, Nicole. Great having you back on the show. Well, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. It is absolutely always a pleasure to have you here. Well, what are we making today? All right, well, today we're gonna do black bass. Nice. Um, and we're gonna kind of pair that with um, a little artichoke stew. We kind of have an oyster theme. We're gonna do little poached oysters, oyster mushrooms, and a little bit of salsify, which is also called oyster root. I love it. So yeah, it should be fun. Awesome, let's um, get started. All right, so we're gonna start right in with the artichokes. Okay. Um, and I think these are, this is one of my favorite ingredients, and I think mm. sometimes it can be a little um, intimidating people. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, they don't really know how to clean them up and use them. Right, there's only a, a small edible portion of the whole artichoke, Exactly, right? which is kind of amazing when you think about yeah. all the waste that you yeah, get from exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. Do you utilize the waste at all in the restaurant? So we these mostly go to compost. Yeah. Um, so but that's really cool that you guys even do compost. Yep, that is cool. Um, so here is an artichoke. Now, one of the things that's kind of cool about it, it, mm -hmm. it is tough to find really good fresh artichokes. Um, one of the ways that you can test for that is you can hear it squeaking. Hmm. That's kind of you know it's a nice artichoke. You got to be careful. The leaves do have some points on them. Sometimes mm -hmm. they they can get you. Um, I use a serrated knife. Okay. And it takes a little practice, um, but once you you get where you're going, I'm just a little over the choke, kind All of right. with a little bit of those purple leaves. So I mean, you lobbed off almost half of it. Right. Um, and so then I'm going to come in with my serrated knife again mm -hmm. and come right in here. And so I can see where I'm getting to the center or the right. choke of the artichoke. Okay. Um, and that's the edible part. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to come right along and follow, I can kind of see it as I'm going. I know the white starts, that's mm -hmm. where I'm gonna go right to. So you kind of just go by color. Exactly. Nice. Um, now what's the season for artichokes? I know they're not typically available all year round. So you can sometimes find them all year. In California, mm -hmm. they, they do a really nice job of growing. These are actually from California, nice. air, organic. Um, spring is a really a good time for them too. Yeah. Um, towards the end of spring they pop up, which a lot of times, People don't actually realize that. Right. But that is. Do we get the them here locally? Um, we do, um, and they're pretty incredible. Around here, they usually come because of the weather uh, around the fall. Oh, interesting. Um, or just towards the end of the summer. How about that? So one of the things with an artichoke too is they oxidize quickly. Okay. Um, so you want to have some acidulated water, mm -hmm. um, and we can just use lemon. Um, if you have vinegar, you could use that. I'm going to come right over here into this bowl. Okay. And. Squeeze the lemon juice right in. And you just put the whole lemon in there the too? The whole lemon in there too. Then from there, I'm just gonna take my paring knife mm -hmm. and kind of come right down. So the outer, outer part. portion of that is still kind of woody. Yep. Tough to digest. Exactly. Okay. So we're coming right in. And now the part that I'm looking for is the white. All right, so All right? still working with color. Yes. Now, as an artichoke gets older, the stem can get fibrous, mm. and we can see the striations here. Right. Um, now, a little trick that you can do, um, as long as your artichoke is fresh, we can come in here with a vegetable peeler mm -hmm. and peel these guys right down. And this gets rid of any of the excess fiber, sometimes even if you come back this way okay. and come in. Oh yeah, so it's a little easier that yeah. way. So you want the stem to be totally white, pretty much. Exactly. So we'll peel this, and you can see right there, it's starting to come through. Yeah, so that's pretty crazy. I mean, to go from this to that. Exactly. Is nuts. Right. And yeah, you can already see it starting to oxidize. That right. happened really fast. Very quickly. So even if you want to stop, you can just kind of dip it in there. Okay. That'll kind of keep that from happening. Um, so now I come right down. I want to cut this in half. Okay. And here, this is also not edible. Right. Um, so I use my little scoop, my melon baller here, oh, and nice. we come right in. Yeah, if you've ever accidentally eaten a little bit of that, it is not pleasant. It's kind of funny, back in the day, I told um, someone that they uh, synthesized the choke of an artichoke, and that's what they came up with, Kevlar. Um, and I was just <laughs> kidding. And years later, I actually heard him tell someone. No that, way. And I was like, oh, Yoni, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so that's basically, we've scooped it out. I'll take any of these little purple leaves. Mm -hmm. As you run that up, they kind of pop out too. Okay. And those are the last ones. But these these little leaves here are nice and edible. All right, awesome. so these go right in here. A lot of work for just a little bit of vegetable, but that's it's worth right. it. That's right, it is worth it. We'll return with more from The Chef's Kitchen. 
We are back with more from The Chef's Kitchen. And basically I'm just gonna come in and peel this guy. You see how white it is on the inside Yeah, super there. white. So, uh, tell me about salsa tea. Why is it considered the oyster vegetable or whatever, whatever you call it? Well, really, just because of the flavor mm -hmm. itself. Um, and it is interesting, it, it kind of has the texture of a carrot and crossed with an artichoke, oh, um, which is kind of weird. Um, and there's kind of a, an interesting way to cook it. Um, this also will oxidize super quickly. Okay. We have some um, that's already cooked. Mm -hmm. But if you were gonna clean a lot of this, you would go right into acidulated water. All right, same um, as the artichoke. Yeah, so I'm just gonna cut this. I'm just gonna dip it really quick. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna come right over here, put this in here, and if you wanna go ahead and pour the milk right over top of it. All of it? Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's cold milk. A lot of times we cook our root vegetables cold to hot. I'm just gonna add a little salt to this. You do that so they cook more evenly? Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and so with salsa fee, once that comes up to simmer, it's gonna be pretty close. And then from there, it's just kind of feel. Okay. All right? I'm gonna demonstrate it for time-wise. This is what you would call a bear gold. Um, a bear gold. Yes, which is uh, an oyster cooking liquid. Mm. Um, so Not familiar with this term. And so it's really carrot, celery, onions. It's just mirepoix with vegetable stock. All right. Um, and you would add your raw, after you sweat out your vegetables, you would add your raw artichokes to it mm -hmm. and then just cover them with veg stock and simmer them. Nice. Um, but we're going to kind of jump up a, a quick process there. Uh, and we'll, we'll use a little ones that we have pre-cooked. Uh, Beautiful oyster mushrooms. Yep, so these are oyster mushrooms. Um, Nicole, if you would just add a little oil to that this middle one? pot. Yep, yep, and you can kind of crank that heat if you would. Okay. All right, so over here, I've just kind of taken the roots off my oyster mushroom, um, and I'm just going to kind of break them up a little bit. Now, Bolit, your restaurant, is named after a mushroom. Yep. You use mushrooms every single time you're on the show. I love how you're always consistently on brand. <laughs> but how are things going over there? They're, they're going pretty well. Good. Um, we're... Uh, just kind of trudging along, we're on our 12th year. Wow, congratulations. Uh, yeah, it's pretty it's amazing. It's a long time. I say it's kind of like dog years, everyone yeah. counts for seven. <laughs> yeah, so. for sure. <laughs> That's the way it feels. Um, all right, so we're just gonna get a little sear. These, you can actually, these could be poached. You don't necessarily oh, really? have to caramelize it for this dish okay. itself. Um, but we're just gonna get them in there, let that the oyster kind of, that umani flavor just mm -hmm. get out in the oil. Um, next, I'm gonna leave this right here. I have sliced a little bit of garlic. We're gonna add this right in. Um, these are some sliced cipollinis. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna go, I have some celery that we kind of sliced on the bias. Nice. Um, I use some of the inner um, stalks mm -hmm. so that it's really nice and tender. Okay. Let's add that to there. A little baby carrots. Love all the right different in. colors. Yep. And this is, you'll see, you know, this is a really great, it's a great tasting dish. Yeah. But it's actually pretty healthy. You For know? sure. It's kind of... You always kind of strike a nice balance between flavor and, and health factor. I mean, you always cook with a lot of fresh vegetables. Yes. And I, you know, I think it's kind of the way to go. This is the taste of, of earth and life. Absolutely. And so you want yeah. to kind of stay true to that. I always love to add a little bit of acid and we'll season as we go too. I'm just going to add a pinch or two of salt in there. Uh, and the salt kind of helps bring the moisture of the uh, vegetables out. It helps bring your flavors together. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's important to season as you go, you know, so that it really melds everything together. So I'm just adding a little lemon juice there, oh, great. Um, a little sherry vinegar. And then we can go ahead. How's it looking? Sweating out so nicely. Now, all right, we'll let that sweat just a touch more. Okay. I am going to jump over and we'll talk about black bass. All right, great. Um, now, you don't just have Bowley, you have some other restaurants as well, and you're also just about to open another one. Tell me about that. <laughs> so we have Mr. Lee's Noodles, uh, which is our ramen restaurant. So good. Um, that's still, we call it farm to ladle. We still do a lot, <laughs> a lot with uh, local ingredients. We go through a whole pig a week. Mm -hmm. It's, wow. you know, a ton a of- A whole pig a week? A ton of farms. Mushrooms, yeah. they're all over the place. And that's at the Easton Public Market. Easton right? Public Market. Mm -hmm. um, and then across from uh, Mr. Lee's, we also have a new restaurant, Silver Shell Kitchen and Counter. Yeah, a little uh, seafood spot. Yeah, right? so it's kind of like a play on a New England clam shack with a small retail section uh, where we do lots of oysters, also one of my favorite ingredients. Yeah. And then your classic fish and chips and 
uh, crab cakes and clam chowder. Yeah, we have steam stuff. steam clams, things Lobster like that. Rolls. Lobster yeah, rolls. Yeah, I love it. Um, and then we're getting ready to open our second Mr. Lee's on Third Street in right here. South Side of Bethlehem. Right love here. It. Yeah, so we're really excited about that. We are excited too. Probably thinking about May as opening. Um, Fantastic! Congratulations. Thank you. Um, okay, so this is our black bass. Mm -hmm. This is from New England. Okay. This comes scaled and gutted. Um, one of the things, you know, when you're looking for uh, fish, you want to see that the eyes are nice and clear. Mm -hmm. um, and this guy, as they go, sometimes they'll get a little bit cloudy. Mm -hmm. um, this one is a little cloudy. That one guy is nice and clear. Okay. So then we can check the gills, and you want the gills to be really nice yeah. and red. Nice. Um, so and we know are. that this is a fresh fish. For sure. Um, a lot of times, because they have um, some spines there, what people do is they'll actually carry them this way, which can create, oh, okay. you know, kind of uh, cloud in the eyes a little bit before. Interesting. We'll return with more from the Chef's Kitchen. We're back with more from the Chef's Kitchen. So one of the things I'll do is I'll just take the back of my knife mm -hmm. and kind of come down here Get for any scales. any extra scales. Where do you typically source your fish from? So we, a lot of companies from Philadelphia, we have mm -hmm. some stuff direct shipped down from New England. We tend to stay mostly uh, with the East Coast fish with the exception of some Alaskan halibut and, mm -hmm. and king salmon. Nice. You want it in your restaurant or on the plate as quick as you can yeah. uh, when the it's out of the water, better. yeah, exactly. for sure. Um, okay, Nicole, if you want to go ahead and add some the artichokes in there. Mm -hmm. All of them? Yep, you can dump them all in there. And then this is our veg stock here, if you okay. just want to give us probably about an inch at the bottom. Perfect. All right, so for this, I'm just going to come right behind the gill. And I come down the back side. This is a pretty standard way of filleting a fish. Yeah, and this these are... A round fish, so as you come in, you go down basically to the backbone. Okay. All right. And then once I hit the backbone, I use the tip of my knife to just kind of come up over the backbone. And then I'm going to come right in here. And these are the ribs. I'm just going to slide right down the ribs. Sometimes you can go right through the ribs. Oh, really? And, and come back, and it's a little easier to kind of clean hmm. those guys up. You're just kind of hugging your knife right along the bone. Exactly. All right. Um, so I'm just going to break this guy up. There are some pin bones in here sure. um, that you can use tweezers to pull out. Um, but I'm just going to kind of slide in and give us two nice pieces. Okay. So you can kind of cut the pin bones out? Yes. And this is our belly piece, which you can use for stocks, sauces. Nice. So I'm going to slide this guy right here. And here we go. You always leave the skin on? I do for bass, especially because mm -hmm. it's such a delicate fish and it's really nice and tender. Yeah. Um, the skin helps keep that together when you cook it. Mm. Um, it also uh, gets nice and crispy. It's yeah. one of my favorite skin Best fish. Part. It's yeah. a pretty skin, too. Yeah, it is beautiful. Okay, so if you want to grab the flour over there. Is this just all-purpose flour? All-purpose flour. Okay. Going to get a little oil in there. So I'm just going to come in. I'm going to season both these guys with a little salt. Mm -hmm. um, I have a little black pepper here today, um, but usually with fish, I like to use white pepper. I feel like it's a little bit more delicate mm -hmm. um, and kind of gives you a, a better flavor. But so for this, I'm just going to use a little tiny pinch here. Where's your fancy pepper grinder? Uh, you know what? I, I think I ran <laughs> out this morning so quick, I forgot it. Um, forgive you this time. All right. So we're going to do, you know what? I'm going to do one side without flour just so you can see the difference. All right. Um, sometimes when, sometimes the flour is actually a little bit of a cheat. You got to be careful with your milk because it can boil over pretty yes, quick. It it's it's nice that, that we actually that if you caught put, that. Um, if you put a spoon over it like that. It'll never boil over? I have not heard that trick. Yeah, And try I'm it. definitely going to try it. definitely that. try it, yeah. I'm going to blow everyone's mind in the kitchen because of the I restaurant today. Because I have had milk boil over so many times and it really doesn't Yeah, work. that's yeah. the... <laughs> all right. Wooden spoon. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go over. We'll just do a quick oyster. Now tell me about these oysters. All right, so these are East Beach Blondes. Um, they're East Beach Blondes. Yes. Okay. Um, and they're from Narragansett, Rhode Island. They're beautiful. I love they're, the green tint. They tin. are very pretty. So I have my side towel here. Mm -hmm. I want to really fold this up, uh -huh. right? This is to protect your hand. If you're a novice, you might want to go with a cut glove. Yeah. At some point, if you really love oysters, you're going to stab yourself. <laughs> There's <laughs> kind of no way around it. Um, and as soon as you get cocky, then, yeah, that's you know, always yeah, you, you have to pay the price. But then it keeps you <laughs> humble and honest. All right, so we have our towel. Mm -hmm. 
And basically, uh, you're going to come in. There's a little notch at the back there. Okay. And cup side down. Cup side Flat down. Side yep. And for me, it's all about the wiggle. It's all not, right. You don't want to force it. You just... So kind of back and yep, forth. Yep, back and forth. Okay. And then it just pops right in there. All right. All right. So from there, I'm going to come in and just kind of slide right down the roof. Okay. Uh, the oyster is only attached to the shell by perfect. the abductor muscle there on the top and the bottom. If you get any little shells, you can just kind of pull them out there. Okay. I slide right in and I pull this back to myself. Okay. Right? And now it's freed up. Perfect. You want to smell them always. Mm. It should smell like the ocean. Fresh. Yep. Mm -hmm. Look um, at that. That's a beautiful plump oyster. It's very, yeah, these are really nice. nice. Size. They're one of our favorites. And this is good, a little bit bigger of an oyster for mm -hmm. poaching because um, they come out. You know, they stay nice and plump right. and, and they're perfect. Are these a brinier oyster? Or? These are definitely, the, from Narragansett Bay, yeah. they're all very salty. Yep. that's what um, I love about them. Yeah, and then there we actually do a couple different oysters uh, in the restaurants, all mm -hmm. from that area. Cool. Um, but it's amazing, just a couple miles, with the farm's a couple miles yeah. down, they taste completely Makes a big different. Makes difference, yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going to come back over. Okay. We are just going to check our salsa fee, mm -hmm. um, and you can kind of see you want it about fork tender, is that what you're yep. looking for? Just and, like any other root vegetable. And you can kind of feel, see how it's mm -hmm. starting to bend? Yeah, there's a little give. We're just about there. All right. All right. So, Nicole, if you want, I have a little sliced salsa fee over there, right, right into here. there. Yep. A little bit more salt in there. A touch of sherry vinegar. We'll return with more from The Chef's Kitchen. We're back with more from The Chef's Kitchen. Why don't you go ahead and add the oysters to our oyster stew here. Okay. Um, one of the things too, I was being a little cautious with our seasoning. With all the brine? Yep, get it all in there because of the brine. So oh, I don't want to go sure. too much salt there or else all of a sudden. Because that could put you way over the way edge. Way over the top. Mm -hmm. All right. It smells fantastic. And it's really, you can really, it's just one of those things where it blends so nice together. Yeah. You have that oyster and the umani from the mushroom. It's very, very nice. Warm. So you only dredge that on one side? Just one side. Mm, and it's just to help keep the skin really crispy. Okay. With the flour, you have to be careful mm -hmm. um, because um, it can burn. Okay. Um, so we're going to add these guys. And you can see the difference on yeah. how much the one that didn't have the flour. That curled up a lot more. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so one of the things with bass, we want to come in. And you want to put a little bit of weight because mm -hmm. that skin pulls together. Right. Um, so I just want to add a little pressure to it. Otherwise, you won't get all of that crispiness on the center Exactly. Part. It'll be kind yeah. of steamed in the middle and mm -hmm. not so crispy on the outside. Um, so as we add our fish to the pan, we talk about smoke point. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you add something, the fish is cold. Um, so even though it's cast iron, right. it still cools down the oil. Sure. It cools down everything. So I'm waiting for the pan to kind of come back to temperature. Mm -hmm. And then once that happens, I'm starting to see a little golden brown, yeah. get some nice thing. I want to turn my flame down just a little bit. Okay. All right. Almost to like a medium. Okay. Um, and I notice you're not moving the fish around the pan. Not yet. Lot. You have to be careful with this because mm -hmm. um, your skin could stick oh, at this point. Because right. uh, we don't have a, a good sear yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so you don't want to tear your skin or sure. kind of rip it up. And you didn't score the skin at all. Is there I didn't. A you for can that? do it, mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of a, a little bit of a cheat. Sometimes with yeah. striped bass, some of the skin's a little tougher. Right. So it's nice to do that. Salmon, it's nice to score it. With the black bass, I don't feel like you really have to. Okay. All right. And we're just gonna take a look. I want to be real gentle because it might not be. Well, it's Perfect. it is pretty nice. Wow. All right. So we're still cooking. Now, one of the things as you're cooking, you'll, you'll see um, that you might have some hot spots, mm -hmm. right? So as I'm cooking, I like to kind of rotate, just like you in baking in an oven. Right. I like to kind of move my fish around a little bit. With striped bass, you, you add your pressure and then you're done. Black bass is one of the, the fish that you kind of have to really? continually okay. kind of keep pressing. All right, so we're almost ready here. Why don't we grab the spinach? Okay. Um, and just a small handful we can kind of toss in there. Um, now, will you season the other side of the fish? So, I don't season the other side until I'm ready to flip it over. Gotcha. Why um, is that? Because the salt actually can pull out moisture from the fish, causing ah. your sear not to be as nice as you want. That's a great tip. Yeah. All right. So, I think we're kind of ready to go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shut this off. All right. All right. So, I, and I'm going to come in. I'm going to do a little bit of salt on the other side. Mm -hmm. I have a little bit of butter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to drop this right in there. 
Um, this pan's really hot, so where I put my butter, I'm actually just gonna add a little bit of sherry vinegar to it. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit of lemon. Um, now, is that gonna affect the crispiness of the skin? So this is what this is why I'm doing it this way. Um, so <laughs> I know gonna, there's always a reason yeah. for everything you do. So I'm gonna add a little bit of thyme. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna kind of move this around here. Um, and then I'm gonna flip flip it. Got it. Right? Oh, that thyme. I'm not oh, gonna baste the fish at all now. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you just want to feel, wow. I think we did pretty good without the flour too. So I think yeah. as long as you're kind of paying attention to it, it's, it, it I'd argue the, the non-floured piece almost looks a little better than the flour. <laughs> um, all right, so there we're, we're pretty much done. We've cooked it almost three quarters of the way on mm -hmm. one side. Um, so that flip over uh, and then we're pretty much so that's finished. Done. All right. Did you want the parsley for that? Or? Yep, let's dump the parsley in. And okay. this can go right at the end. So it stays nice and fresh. Um, yeah. All right, so we just add a little broth there. Mm. And we'll use the non-floured piece. Gorgeous. Um, Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Ooh. See, I'm gonna take all that so, crispy yeah, skin with me. Mmm, wow. That broth has so much flavor, we need a spoon. Mmm. So many different things going on, but they all harmonize together beautifully. Well, thank you. I'm glad you enjoy it. I always do. <laughs> Your food is, it never disappoints. Well, it's, well, thank you, you always so much. knock it out of the park. I love to be on Chef's Kitchen so that I can show the techniques that we do in the restaurant, the products that we use, the life that goes into the food and share it with the customers.